Hey, while you in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. My brothers get bull whipped and torn apart, and then you tell me, be Baptist. What's gonna happen? Everybody gonna fall in, everybody gonna be Baptist. Out of what? Fear, out of fear. Read that again. We reverse nature by burning and pulling one civilized nigga apart mm -hmm. and bull whipping the other to the point of death, yes. all in her presence. So wait, if the black man get ripped apart, whipped to death in front of the black woman, what is that gonna do to her man? How she gonna look at him? Demasculate him. Demasculate him. Is they not doing that in the media? With these rappers, what they making the rappers wear now? Tight, tight purses, clothes, purses, tight clothes, dresses. And what is that doing to the male image? You say what? Panties? What is that? What is that doing to the male image? Because we got a thirteen-year-old right here. When he see men, what that's gonna do? That's gonna corrupt his mind. Exactly. That's gonna mess his mind up. When he see a man, he supposed to see strength. He supposed to see power. So they use the same tactics that they use here in this Willie Lynch letter. The same thing. Go back to Deuteronomy now. Because they talked about their fierce countenance, the way that they did. A little bit further now. He reads. By her being left alone, Unprotected with the male image destroyed. With what? With the male image destroyed. That's why we're gonna talk about the color of Christ in a minute. Because imagery is important. If the male image gets destroyed, like I said, we got a 13 year old right here. Who is he gonna have to look up to as a young man? Nobody. He's not gonna have nobody. Even when they push the thug rappers. If all he sees is drill rappers, what's gonna happen to him? He's gonna follow that. He gonna follow that. Now he gonna be taking pictures with guns, sagging his pants, trying to get in tour with somebody, Facebook Live, and all this crazy stuff because that's the image that's portrayed in front of him. So a male image is very important for a young man. Read Deuteronomy 28. We're back at 50. Yep. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 50. Uh huh. A nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old. Nor show favor to the young. So we all agree this is what happened to us. This is in history. You can't deny it. You can't refute it. Now we're showing you that it's in the Bible. Moses spoke about this stuff way before it happened. Here's something else. Did our children get sold in slavery? Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 28, 37. Let's Deut see if that's in the Bible. Read it. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 37. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt become an astonishment. A proverb and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall leave thee. And thou shalt become an astonishment. So when people, when other races see our people, they are shocked, believe it or not. Who familiar with Sukiyan? Who is that? Hello. A rapper? Prostitute. A prost yeah, a prostitute. What's a, what's a famous video where she came out, what, she was at a stove? And she said the most disgusting thing I ever heard. Huh? No, she didn't say pee on. Say what? You say what? Hey. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. When she came, she came out of the store. She was talking about she wanted to get uh, her thing stretched. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. When people see our people, they be astonishment is they surprise, they shocked, like, oh how? Believe it or not, some people know that we God's people, but when they see how we act now, they like, what this can't be them. These the people that come from David, is you serious? They women talking about getting their thing stretched. 
she was in Rome, right? Rome. Dubai. Read it again. And thou shalt become an astonishment. So we went from being a powerful people, a people of respect, to now we in astonishment. Why all they, they, they men have their pants hanging off their ass? Why they don't stay with their women after they get them pregnant? This is what they say about our people. They, they can't believe. They in shock. Read. A proverb and a byword. A proverb is a wise saying. Or what they call today a stereotype. What's some stereotypes they say about our people? Ignorant. What's another? Drugs. Violence. Always late. Believe it or not, they'll put that on you before you even open your mouth. What's another one? They are what? What they say? Uneducated. You say what? Uneducated. Uneducated. What's another one? They, if they tall, they play basketball. What's another one? We eat watermelon. Fried chicken. Fried chicken. These is all stereotypes. That's that proverb. And then what it say? Proverb and what? A proverb and a byword. They say all Mexicans gang bang, but then it said what? A what? And a byword. We are the Israelites, but now we call all type of different names. Is anybody in here black? The color black? No. But we're put, we're labeled as that term. These chairs is black. These pants we got on is black. Ain't nobody this color for real. It ain't no country called black, but this is what they label us. Afro-American. What is an Afro? That's a damn hairstyle. What we call that? Latin X. They just changed the Latino nationality. What the hell is a Latin X? Negro. Nigga. Our name get changed every damn year. Every couple of years they changing our name. We don't. A proverb and a byword among all nations. Among some people? Among all nations. These things is said and spoken about amongst all races of people concerning us. Read. Whither the Lord shall lead thee. Whither the Lord shall lead thee. Because God allowed it to happen because of what? Because we went against him. We went against his rules. So he allowed it to happen. Now did our children get sold into slavery? Jump up to verse 32. V verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Did that happen in history? How is it happening today? I'm sorry. I asked, did it happen in history? Y'all said, yeah, because it, yeah. it did. They sold our children. They split up families. I said, how is it happening today? DCFS. They could kick in your door and say you are an unfit parent and take them kids. And it'll be, you'll be going through hell and high water to get your children back and prove that you are a fit parent. Read it again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. And what you going to be able to do about it? And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thine hand. You not going to be able to do nothing but cry. When they took our kids back then, we couldn't do nothing but cry. We didn't have no military. We couldn't fight back. We couldn't buy them back. Uh, Twelve years of slave. What was his name? Oliver North. I can't remember his name. I think it's Norfolk. I think his last name was Norfolk. He was actually free, and they took him and made him a slave for 12 years. The man was free, bought his freedom. That's showing you we fit the things written here. We fit these curses. Now, let's jump down to verse 68. Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. Did blacks go into slavery on slave ships? That's documented history. Did Hispanics go into slavery on slave ships? They did. Did Native Americans go into slavery on slave ships? They did. Now, we're going to show y'all that before we read this scripture. Should be on the fly. I'm on slave ships. It should be on the fly. Native Americans went into slavery on slave ships as well, just like the blacks. Just like the Hispanics did. Got it? Yeah. Okay. This is calling and read. This is the Black Indians, a hidden heritage. Page 27. The Christopher Columbus 
whose unique seamanship and courage had opened the Americas to European penetration. What did his voyage do, his travels do? Read that again. The Christopher Columbus, whose unique seamanship and courage had opened the Americas to European penetration. So what happened? What that's saying, when Christopher Columbus came over here and saw the Aztecs, he saw the Mayans, he saw the Native Americans, he saw our brothers that was already here. What else did he see that they had? Land, what else? Food, Food what else? Money. Wealth. Wealth. Yeah, land, yeah, wealth. It was wealth here. It was gold here. We had it was gold over here. Stuff that was naturally over here. And what did he do? He told the other Caucasians. That's why it was like a rush of Caucasians coming over here to America from Europe. And, and, and you know something that's crazy? The same thing happened in Africa. What's in Africa? Rubble. Talking about resources. Rubber is in Africa. Diamonds is in Africa. Uh, oil. Cobalt. Oil. Cobalt. So a lot of metal, a lot of, a lot of fine metals and minerals. A lot of minerals. So when the first Caucasian came into Africa finding stuff, he told other Caucasians, now in Africa is split up. You got one part of Africa, the French own it, the Chinese own it, the Russians own it, the Dutch own it. Because they came over there stealing. Same thing. Read that again. The Christopher Columbus, whose unique seamanship oh, okay. and courage had opened the America and opened the Americas to European penetration. Uh -huh. Also began the transatlantic slave trade. So his voyage was the start of the transatlantic slave trade. But they'll tell our kids, oh, this is when he discovered America. No, he came over here stealing, and when he saw the wealth. Like y'all said, the land, the resources, he went and told other Europeans, and they all came over here still. Read. He started by shipping ten chained Arawak men and women to Seville, Spain. He did what? He started by shipping ten chained Arawak men and women to Seville, Spain. He took natives from here that was already here, had a civilization, and did what to them? He started by shipping 10 Ar chain Arawak men and women to Seville, Spain. Took them into slavery on slave ships to Spain. Showing you blacks and Hispanics, both blacks and Hispanics and Native Americans went into slavery on slave ships. Now read the Bible. Does the Bible say that? Because remember, we're the Israelites. So everything we read in was said to happen to the Israelites. And we looking in history, these things did happen. Read the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. When the Israelites first left Egypt, how they leave? How they leave? When the Israelites first left Egypt, how they leave? Walking. walking. They walking. So why right here Moses saying you're going to go back into Egypt with a ship? Why is he saying that? What was the Israelites status when they was in Egypt? What was their position when they was in Egypt? Say what? They were slaves. So read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So Egypt and Egypt, the Israelites were slaves. So he's saying, you're going to go back into slavery again. How? With ships. Who went into slavery on slave ships? We did. And the discussion. We are the Israelites. Keep reading. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. He said the same way I'm telling you. This is how it's going to happen. You're going to go into slavery on slave ships. And then what's going to happen? Thou shalt see it no more again. You're not going to see the physical land Egypt no more. Read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. What's going to happen when you get off the boat? Ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Did not they have us on auction blocks selling us? Nigga, 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 500 right here. Nigga, 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 400 right here. Do I got 400? Do I got 500? They was bidding on us. Read on. For bond men and bond women. You're going to be sold for slave men and slave women. Read. And no man shall buy you. That buy right there mean redeem. Read. And no man shall redeem you. So that's showing you we are the Israelites. Not question. What is the commandments? Because what we read and all the history we went over, 
Those was curses or bad things put on us for disobedience. So what's some of the rules that we were supposed to keep? That we still supposed to keep to this day? Anybody know? Ten Commandments. What's in the Ten Commandments? Let's name some of them. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So if we celebrate Easter, what are we doing? You say what? Celebrating another God. I thought you said Ishtar over there for a minute. So you read. So you you shouldn't be celebrating Easter. We better not see you with no basket. None of that. Not even no. Can't do that. <laughs> Get Jeremiah 2, 33. You know what I'm looking for. We can't be doing that because we know it's lies. That's just like before we knew this, a lot of us, the parents, will still celebrate Christmas and Christmas is a lie. And they'll say they're doing it for the kids. But what are you doing? You still doing what? Pagan holiday. You still celebrating a pagan holiday. You still lying to the kids. Ain't no fat uh, Caucasian man coming down no chimney. You still lying to him. Do y'all know the history of Christmas? You say what? No, 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 no. So with Christmas, we was the gifts. Do y'all know that? We was the gifts. You know how they celebrate Christmas over in the Netherlands? Anybody know? Yeah, you yeah, you watching and read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called Swarty Pete. The character that all of them paint themselves blackface and try to look like his name is Swarty Pete. And Swarty Pete represent the blacks that they conquered. Because we used to rule Europe too. I'll show you that real quick. It's a book called Nature Knows No Color Line, right? In this book, you see images of black coats of arms, black families, showing that we rule. Uh, walk around and show that real quick. Still on that point with Christmas. Coats of arms. So Swarthy Pete, again, is the character who represents them conquering us. We was in Europe. If you ever go to Europe, they will have flags, statues, and posters of black faces because we used to run all that. But they conquered us and put us in slavery. But when we celebrate Christmas, Easter, all of that, let's worship another God. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 33. And we do it for the kids. Read. Why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? That's what we're doing. When we still celebrate this stuff and we know what it means, we trimming our ways or compromising the truth to seek love. Because sometimes, I tell you, once you start changing and you stop celebrating this stuff, your family's not going to like it. And what some people will do, they'll still celebrate the day knowing it's lies. So don't nobody disown them. So don't nobody uh, ostracize them or separate from them. You don't worship your birthday, because that's self-worship. You don't celebrate your birthday or call somebody on their birthday. What will they do? They'll get mad at you. I'm telling you from experience. Once I start learning, I'm like, man, I ain't doing this stuff no more. I'm telling people, well, why you ain't calling me? Bro, that's paid. I'm not doing that. But what some people will do, because they don't want to go through that, they'll still celebrate. Read it again. Why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? Therefore... Has thou also taught the wicked ones thy ways? What's another? What's two ways you teach people? Yeah. Well, you no, know, I just watched this. So it's not it's just, then how? Moisturizing. Showing them how. Example. Example. So this is teaching. But then another way of teaching is, say you see somebody in a uh, jewel, you watching how they act. So if you see them celebrating a day that they shouldn't, you're going to think it's okay. Why? Read that again. Why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? When you do that, because you're trying to seek love deep down, you don't want nobody not to deal with you no more, read. Therefore, hast thou also taught the wicked ones thy ways. You're teaching the kids that it's okay. Because why we don't buy our child a gift on a random Monday? Here, 
Here's, I don't know what toys they make now. Whatever toy just came out or whatever game system. Here, I bought it for you. It's Monday the 8th. But we want to wait to buy it on the 25th. Why? Because we're still trying to keep customs that ain't ours. Still celebrating, still worshiping that God. So no, let's get some more rules. So we got, thou shall have no gods before me, right? What about thou shall not steal? That's something that we supposed to keep, but we don't. Get, let's read Exodus chapter twenty. Let's read. I tried to go to church. You know how you go on that path, you're trying to change yourself. They tell you, convince you go to church. You're trying to get right. But I never heard what I'm going to show y'all in church. I never heard. I, I saw singing, and dance. Uh, what, what the pastor told me at the place I went to bring. Oh, uh, you were tithing the giver. This is your year of prosperity. But I'm not learning what I need to learn when it comes to governing and conducting myself. Read that. Explain. You say what? I can't. Yeah, that's why you flipped the table. They was in the selling their merchandise inside the temple. The temple was supposed to be a sacred place. They was in there going against what the Bible says. So he went in there and flipped the table over. That's showing you that's a black man. I ain't show you Jesus black. But that's showing you that's a black man right there. You get pissed off. You come home. Flip the damn table over. You get mad. But he did that because they was going against what the word said. Read that. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 15. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not steal. Simple, plain as day. Do our people follow this today? Nope. Hell no. Get it by any means. Get it by any means. I bring this up a lot. Going to George Floyd riots. I saw stealing from all ages of people. Who else? Can I get a witness? I had a furniture stove across the street from me where I used to live. I saw old folks stealing furniture, mattresses, dresser sets, cabinet sets, old folks who supposed to be like, hey, stop. No, they with the young people stealing. Read that again. Exodus chapter 20, verse 15. Thou shalt not steal. Plain as day, this is something that we supposed to keep. But remember what it said in Deuteronomy. If thou wilt not hearken unto all his commandments, I will bring these curses upon you. This is a commandment we pose to follow. Ephesians 4, 28. We're talking about still. Read. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. Mm -hmm. Let him that stole steal no more. You hear what the Bible says? If you used to steal, you pose to stop. And then what? But rather, let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that need it. So what did the Bible just tell us? Work. If you got an issue with stealing, you need to get a job so you can get what you need. This is not taught in church. Hence why our brothers are still stealing. If you tell me stealing is wrong, you got to show me how it's wrong. I got to be taught. I got to find a source. You got to have a source of reference that I can go to to show you what I'm doing wrong. From there, get uh, Isaiah 3 and 5. Because who's doing the stealing? We're talking about stealing right now. Who's doing the stealing? Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 5. Uh -huh. And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the age. What did that just say? The child shall behave himself proudly against the age. Do not, it said, the, the child shall behave himself proudly against the age. Are not these young men robbing older people, older folk, pistol whipping them, robbing them on the red line, robbing them on the green line? The Bible is talking about these things. Why we not talk, thou shalt not steal. It must be instilled in a child. Thou shalt not steal. Read on. And the base against the honorable. Jump to verse 12. Verse 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors. Who is doing the oppressing? Children are the are their oppressors. Another reason why the old heads don't say nothing to the young men, they're afraid. Children is doing the robbery. Children is doing the killing. Read. And women rule over them. And what? And women rule over them. Is that in order or is that disorder? That's disorder. The woman not supposed to be over the man. The woman not supposed to be running everything. Everybody ain't supposed to go to Big Mama. They supposed to go to Grandpa. 
So that's showing you everything just out of order. You still come out to steal it. Read that again. Get 2 Thessalonians 3 and 10. So this is what we got to be taught. If we was taught this from you, we wouldn't have it by any means nature in our mind. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 10. Uh -huh. But even when we were with you, this we commanded you. This that Paul talking to, by the way. Paul, like, even when I was around y'all, what did we teach you? Read. This we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Man, if you don't work, you don't eat. You, whatever you need, you need to work and go get it. Don't steal it from somebody. Don't take it from somebody. Micah 2 and 8, he's still talking about stealing. So the solution is stop the stealing. Young men got to be taught to work for what they need. And again, these are the commandments or the rules that we wasn't keeping. That's why we went into slavery. All the images and things that we showed you. That's why the slavery took place. Read Micah chapter 2 and verse 8. Even of late, my people is risen up as an enemy. Now right here, this ain't talking about the white man doing something to us. This is talking about us. That's God saying, my people. Who was God's people? The Israelites. He's saying, my people then rose up lately doing what to each other? Ye pull off the robe with the garment from them that passed by securely as men averse from war. Read that again. Even of late, my people is risen up as an enemy. So our people rising up against each other. How? As an enemy. Doing what? Ye pull off the robe with the garment. Your robe or your garment, that's your jacket, them your clothes. What they doing? Read. From them that pass by security. So people walking by you thinking that they safe, and then you bust them upside the head, take their pelly coat, take their Jordans, their iPhone, whatever they got. Do not know how people do this to each other? That's showing you we are the people of the book. But also showing you how God feeling about the stealing. We're not supposed to steal. These are the rules we're supposed to keep. Go back to Exodus 20. Hold your finger on Exodus 20. You just don't deal with the rules we're supposed to follow. So we're not supposed to steal. You need some work for it. Every last one of y'all in here is working for what you need. You're not stealing from nobody. Read. Exodus 20. Yep. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 16. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Uh-oh. What that mean? Don't lie. Don't lie on a person. What will happen when you lie on somebody? What's something that can happen? Your altercation. Give me some examples. <laughs> Say an altercation. Give me some examples. That's vague. Could be an argument. That's an altercation. Give me some more. What's some drastic that can happen from a lie? Get killed. Somebody can die from a lie. Proverbs 19 and 5. Because we're talking about lying. This is something that we're supposed to keep amongst ourselves. We God's people, but we got to do what God says. Today, people lie about everything. They lie on Instagram. Take pictures in front of places like they've been there and they ain't really been there. They got somebody car saying this, they car, they lie about everything. They lie to themselves. We're not supposed to be out here lying. Read. Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 5. A false witness shall not be unpunished. What did God say? A false witness shall not be unpunished. So we talking about lying. God said a liar is not going to be unpunished. So if you live a life as a liar, you will not go unpunished. God is going to judge you in the end. Get, uh... Yep, finish that up. Again, go to Sirach 7. And he that speaketh lies shall not escape. It said, he that speaketh lies will not escape. What is that telling us? It said, he that speaketh lies. You say what? You're not going to get away with it. What they say? When you tell one lie, you got to do what? Keep it up. Keep it up. You got to keep lying. Sirach 7 and 15. Yeah. Got it. Sirach, okay. chapter 7, verse 14. Uh -huh. Use not many words in a multitude of elders, uh -huh. and make not much babbling when thou prayest. Read. Hate not laborious work, neither husbandry. You know what I'm looking for? Uh, Customized sex a lot. Thought it was up in there. Read. 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 Read.
that's what I'm looking for. Go back to Exodus. Oh, there we go. Verse 12. 7 and 12. Sirach 7 and 12. The book of Sirach, chapter 7 and verse 12. I know it was in that chapter. Right? Devise not a lie against thy brother. So you're not supposed to lie on your brother, your sister, for no reason. Some people allow somebody to get their position. Read. Neither do the like to thy friend. Neither do to your friends. Read. Use not to make any manner of lie. Uh -huh. For the custom thereof is not good. You hear what God? From now. Go back to Exodus 20 now. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 17. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. So that right there, that, that commandment right there, thou shalt not covet. What is that talking about? Thou shalt not covet. And he gave the example. Don't covet your neighbor's wife, his house, anything he got. What that's going into? Jealous, jealous of it. Yeah, jealous. jealous of it. So if you become covetous, right, what will you do? You're going to try to take it. So God is telling us, do not covet. We're not supposed to covet. When you look at us as a people in the music, what they doing? Covet. I'll take a man woman. I'll take his shoes off his feet. I'll take this. I'll take that. That's you covetous. It's not yours. But you desire it and you'll do anything to take it. You're not supposed to be like that. Ephesians 5 and 5. Because you will take it. What's some drastic you will do? You will kill for it. You will kill for it. That's what a lot of our people do out here. A woman to do that too. She'll get somebody set up because she covets something. If I assist in you killing this person, I can get this lump sum of money. Somebody's coveting something. Read Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 5. Uh -huh. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Everybody want to go to heaven, right? Who want to go to heaven? Everybody in here want to go to heaven. Read that again. We can't read that quick. We got to slow down and read that. Read that again. For this ye know, that no whoremonger. A whoremonger. What's a whoremonger? Anybody know? A whoremonger. What's a whoremonger? Nope. Nope. Is this, is two faced. Ain't it like they, like they? Yes. Nope. I'm gonna help y'all. I thought that it was I a heard person you. who um, commits sex out of marriage. Yep. Multiple uh, people. But this right here said, yeah, multiple people. This right here said a whoremonger. What was uh Michael B. Jordan's character's name in Black Panther? What was his name? Eric Killmonger. What, what was it? Eric Killmonger. Edward, Edward, Eric, Eric. Killmonger, Killmonger right? right? Killmonger. Why did he get that name? He liked to kill. He killed people. He killed a lot of people. So what's a whoremonger? Mama just said it right here. What's a whoremonger? So Killmonger, his name was Killmonger because he killed a lot of people. What's a whoremonger? Have sex with everybody. That's a whoremonger. For this ye know that no whoremonger, uh -huh. nor unclean person, nor unclean person that unclean covers a variant of things, messing with animals, messing with kids, that's uncleanness. Read. Nor covetous man. I'm talking about covetous. If you want something that somebody else has, it's not yours, and you're willing to take it from them. No covetous man or woman, because a woman can deal with these things too. Read. Who is an idolater? An idolater, you worship other gods. You would, even if it's something that's a vice in you, you will put that before God. That's idolatry. Read. Have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God? People who don't leave these things alone, are they getting into heaven? No. So if anybody in here, you deal with those things, any of our people deal with those things. They got to repent. That's why when Christ came on the earth, he was telling people to repent, change, or they're not going to get into heaven. Let's go back to Exodus now. So we talked about stealing. That's something that we told you to be following. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not covet. Let's go up to 
Oh, I don't know why we didn't read that. Read verse 14. Deuteronomy. I mean, I'm sorry. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 14. Uh huh. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Mm -hmm. So what is that? Cheating. Has sex outside of marriage. Cheating. Has sex outside of marriage. And it could be two different ways. It could be a husband. He step out. Go ahead. So even dating is sin? Yes. Sex is only for marriage. You say what? You come on. Now ain't no kind of right. You got to be all no, in. Ain't, no, good, it ain't no halfway. You can't. No, I want to do my little thing over here. Nah, you, no, no, you, you got to be all in. What, what if you don't believe? Yeah, yeah. You say what? <laughs> what if you don't believe in marriage and you stay celibate? You, 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 stay, you, stay, you stay with each other though. You still do with each other. That's sin. If you love her, you gonna make her a wife. I'm gonna show you what that is, right? Because I've seen brothers say that, like, damn, man, I don't know about that. And then I'll be like, bro, how long you been with me? Nine years. But what if you, like, you get married, like, in private, but, like, you don't have no papers? No, nah, you're supposed to get papers. You don't got to get a ring. You can get papers. You don't have to have a ceremony. Papers. You say what? You gotta get papers. Who didn't get papers? You got to get papers? Yeah, you got to get papers. Be married? Yes. Like, like you're saying, you would die in your apartment. You still got to get paperwork. What kind of shoes you got on? Uh, Air Max. Air Max. Yeah. When you bought them Air Max, you got some paper with that, didn't you? I got a receipt. That's paperwork. Yeah. So when you get married, you got to get paperwork. A legal binding document. Thank you, sir. That's a legal binding document. When I got married, went to the courthouse. I have a marriage license. I don't got no ring because that's not our culture. That's not our custom. But I have paperwork. When you get a house, you got paperwork. You got a car? Yeah. You got paperwork on that car. So it's the same thing with your wife. Read that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. Marriage is honorable in all. So remember, we're talking about marriage. It said marriage is honorable in all. Meaning what? God only respects marriage. He don't respect dating. That's the thing that we get here. The church be having a day of ministry. So they be in there trying each other out. No, that's not supposed to go on. God only honors marriage. Not thoughts, not bust downs, boot things, none of that. Marriage. Read. Marriage is honorable and all, and the bed yeah. undefiled. But whoever a husband and wife do is good. You said you Because sex is for who? Marriage. Yeah. Sex is for a husband and a wife. Read. But whoremongers and adulterers. Here go again. What's a whoremonger we forgot? Right? Good question. Go ahead. Like, what how are you going to cut them off? Like, don't like the person. Yeah, well, you go ahead and marry me. I mean, like, how you, you, you supposed to get that stuff together first, bro. Sure. You supposed to get to know the person. You ain't supposed to test drive it. You ain't, nah, let me go ahead and let me see if I know. You ain't supposed to do that. You supposed to get to know the woman first. Thoroughly get to know her, find out if she crazy. Because sometimes brothers will just get with a woman because of how she looks. But you don't know if she's crazy. Sir. Yes, you will. If you take the time and get to know her first and not sleep with her, you'll find out. But if you sleep with her first and then you marry her, then years later you find out she's crazy as hell, you stuck. So you're supposed to get to know her first. Ask about her family. What's her upbringing? What type of background do she come from? Has she been abused before? This is stuff you pose to ask, but we don't do that. You'd be like, man, she fine. Look, she uh, uh, uh. and then you, you with her, and then you finding out all this stuff. Seriously, you pose to ask them questions. Yes, sir. I'm just talking. I've been here for 20 years. Uh-oh. You're not going to find a perfect woman in the fight person. So there's going to be something you just have to deal with. Sir, what's your name? David. Mr. David. Mr. David, when you find out them things, it's up to you to see if you can continue to deal with them things after you find them out, right? Yeah, I mean, you, you, like I said, you stand before God and take vows and everything. There's only one thing that you can do to separate from your wife. If he doesn't honor divorce, if he's a death, you know, only way you can part from your wife, according to the Bible, is if she commit adultery. 
But if she don't commit adultery, you say what? What? You yeah. shocked? Yeah, you yeah, you're shocked over that? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's what God said. And it sounds crazy because in society, I'm gonna come back to you, Mr. David. In society, I was about to say what you add, but you add abuse. all that. Go ahead, man. Wasn't there something about abuse? Something about abuse in the Bible. I thought there was something about abuse. The Bible does talk about a man being abusive, but if if it's an issue with the spouse, they abuse of God forbid, because I know that stuff happens. Or they I own stabbed drugs. my first husband because he abused me. I stabbed him. I enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> I did. I'm um, sorry to hear that, man. It's okay. It's okay. Um, our children are grown, grown now, and mm -hmm. we can be in the same room. Um, but I remarried, and I remarried an amazing man that I've been married to for 25 years, and I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't change anything because I was able to leave. But that situation there, that was your first, like, real relationship. You wasn't aware of all this, what we talking about. Correct. I mean, I never thought that. I never thought. I mean, you stop and you think. People are raised in this, this, this proverbial two-parent household, and everything is wonderful, and you would never expect such an act of, because it was never, ever in the forefront. It was, there was no indicators, none. And then all of a sudden it just happened. It was the first and last time. Because I will never be abused in front of my children. Ever. And that's good. A lot of women, they don't have that mentality. They stay until they die. Mm -hmm. And when I say stay until they die, they stay until the first okay. beating becomes the second beating, the third beating, then the last beating is the last beating. Right. Meaning she's out of there. She's gone. Yes. So in them situations, God forbid, that's when a separation would have to come. Because that talks about in, uh, in 1 Corinthians 7, Paul mm -hmm. talk about separating for a time and then reconciling. But a lot of these situations that we got in without the Bible, that's us not knowing how we're supposed to deal with each other, how we're supposed to treat one another. Now we're learning that, which goes back to my brother's situation. He's talking about, well, what if she swing on me? What if she... This, what if she that? You supposed to find all that out in the beginning. But going back to Mr. Davis' point, because you've been married 20 years. I mean, speaking of, you don't find, I mean, you find out some stuff, but then, there's no marriage going wrong. My wife, you got to and everything to work it out and everything. You know what I'm saying? Right. There's nothing you can do. You can't, I'm not saying, saying what you're saying is wrong, but you can't find out everything at the beginning. Things are going to happen throughout your marriage. You know? Yeah, you're going to have marital trials. You're going to have marital trials. But we talking about the stuff that you supposed to know about this. Right, people don't do that. They literally, I like this person and that's it. And I'm going to show you that in the Bible. Because there's some stuff you're going to find out. It's like, okay, you find out she's an introvert. Okay, can you put up with that for the rest of your life that she's an introvert? And you got to kind of nudge her sometimes to... Communicate, that's something for you to decide. I'm trying to think of some more things, some more characteristics. Introvert, uh, bipolar. You say what? <laughs> Physical appearance. Yes. Physical appearance. Those bipolar. These is. She's friendly to anybody. Everybody. Friendly. Everybody. That's not always good to be super friendly. She's flirtatious. Right, you say that. Yeah. that okay, yeah. now that's a red flag. Club these dog. is all things, all these things we name. These is things, once you find that out, if you keep going, that's on you. Everybody understand that? You find all this stuff out, you still like, you know what? I'm going to marry this person. Okay, you saying you're going to deal with all that. We finish that up in Hebrews. Uh, no, sir. Uh, marriage is honorable and all. And the bed undefiled. Oh, temper. What if she got a temper? Is you going to, all right, now you find out she got a temper. Is you going to stay with her and help her try to, is there any wiggle room for her to get over that? But some be hiding it. You say what? Some be hiding it. That's true. Some be hiding it. Yeah. That's why you got to take your time. That's where we finna go next. You have to, when you get to know a person, it takes time, bro. Let me ask you this. You got homeboys, right? Yeah. How long it take for you to get to know them? You see what I'm saying? It take a long time. So you talking about marrying somebody or being with some, a woman for marriage? 
You have to take your time, bro. You got to think. She going to be the mother of your kids. You got to think about all this stuff. Damn. Okay, this wrong with her. That's wrong with her. Do I still want to pursue this? This is all stuff that you got to think about. Because once you put a baby in her, you marry her, that's it, bro. You didn't already started a situation. Ain't no going back. We don't. And the bed undefiled, mm -hmm. but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So what's some ways God will punish a whoremonger? Getting A. Getting A. Let's read that real quick, because we don't think that God will make you get a disease. If you want to keep sleeping with every woman you come in contact with, God going to slow you down some kind of way. It's going to be disease or death. Child support. Deuteronomy. Child support too. A lot of brothers cry about that. But that's punishment. Your fault, that's your fault. You, you wanted to be slinging pipe all through the neighborhood. You gonna pay for that in the end. It's brothers who cry like real tears. I ain't never got no money when my check come. Well bro, ain't nobody tell you to do all that sleeping around. It's, it's a punishment. Oh, this going on with my son. My daughter in Texas. Now she, a, she got pregnant by this dude. Well, you can't be there because you got kids by all these women. You can't physically be there. That's a punishment. So you got to bite the bullet. You got to take your punishment. Read. You got that? Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 61. Mm -hmm. Also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law. Plagues are diseases. He said every sickness and every plague, which is not written in this book. Read. Them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. He'll bring them upon you until you be destroyed if you disobey him. He didn't make us to try to have a high body count. Like we taught as young men to try to be like gold. Y'all seen, what's that, Dolomite? The Little Pimp movie? We taught to try to imitate that. Try to be like, who familiar with, uh, what the hell is his name? Will Chamberlain. He posed and slept with a thousand women. Uh, Magic Johnson. He was sleeping around. What happened to him? Oh, oh no, man. He got to be He must not be a paw. He too healthy, bro. He got money, bro. That medicine costs money. But he caught AIDS from sleeping around. That's a punishment. These are the things God will do to his people when they don't do the instructions that he gave them. Yep. Uh, 23. So y'all read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, so it's a rock. Chapter 23, verse 17. So my brothers, if you a whoremonger, this God's gonna talk about you right now. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. What that mean? Everything. Mm. All bread. Everything. All, he ain't talking about bread, is he? Nah, he's talking about ugly. Everything. Everything, anything, anything. Everything. You know That's the mind of a whoremonger. Read. He will not leave off till he die. What God say? He will not leave off till he die. So, the woman who sweat up and down, when she get him, she gonna change. What God say? He will not leave off till he die. It don't matter how fine the woman is, she's not gonna change that man. Women be like, well, he just keep, he keeps sleeping around, he a whoremonger. God said he ain't gonna stop till he die. Something gotta stop him physically. He gotta get AIDS, child support, something gotta stop him from sleeping around. I can't even say the child support because they'll still sleep around making more babies. AIDS, something, a disease, or death. Read. A man that breaketh wedlock, saying, thus in his heart, who seeth me? Because whoremongers be like, who seeth me? I got a woman in this city, then I go up here, I got a woman in that city. Don't nobody see me. God see everything we do. And we're going to have to give account for it in the end. Read. I am compassed about with darkness. The walls. When do a lot of sleeping around and sneaky links happen? During the day. Oh, uh, not during the day. If, if it's happening during the day, you just bold. You don't care. Read that again. I am compassed about with darkness. He said, I'm compassed about with darkness. It's, it's nighttime. Read. The walls cover me, and nobody sees me. That's what the whoremonger say. Don't nobody see me when I take my flight over here. God see you. It ain't about man eyes. God see you. So then when you see the man get the AIDS and all these other things happen, that's punishment from God. What's something else that can happen? Read Hebrews 13 and 4 again. 
So when you a whoremonger, do the whoremonger generally ask if the woman that he trying to lay down with is married? No, but we care. He don't care. So the whoremonger, because all bread is sweet to him, he will approach a woman and don't even know that that's somebody white. And lay down with her and everything. Read. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So you sleep with a, a man's wife, you're now an adulterer. So how does God punish adulterers? The book of well, Proverbs. Yeah, get that one. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse, verse 32. Mm -hmm. But whoso commit adultery with a woman, Lack it understand. So God said when a man commit adultery, he lack understanding. You didn't have no understanding. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know the end effect that will happen when you're dealing with a woman that don't belong to you. Read. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. God said you destroy your own soul when you do it. Read. A wound and a dishonor shall he get. And his reproach shall not be wiped away. Do, will, will men respect you knowing that you did that? I'm asking y'all, would y'all continue to hang with a brother that did that to somebody? Like he known for destroying a family. A lot of brothers will. They don't got no morals, but somebody with dignity, they wouldn't hang around. Especially if they married. Like, damn, bro, I don't know about you, man. Because now he questionable. If he did something low down and grimy like that, you don't know if he's going to do it to you. That's what brothers don't be thinking about when they commit that act. Read on. For jealousy is the rage of a man. Uh-oh. So now we're talking about God punishing the adulterer and said jealousy is the rage of a man. Who's jealousy? The husband. So the man find out you was dealing with his wife. Read that again. For jealousy is the rage of a man. Uh huh. Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. What it say? He will not spare in the day of vengeance. Does that mean he got the right to kill him? You say what? I ain't say that. That's telling you what will happen to the that husband if he find you with his woman. It could go all type of ways. I was just gonna. You can get away with that shit too. I was just gonna say that. I'm telling you, I was just gonna say that. I was gonna ask. Did anybody know that? Right. You can't think about it and come back tonight. Right. That's premeditated. Right. Right. But that's something that can happen. If you do it right. Don't be plotting no murders, y'all. I'm listening to y'all. Don't be plotting no murders. I mean, I'm just saying, if it happens, just know that whatever happened at that moment, you can just get away. Damn, you can do that? Right then and there, don't come back. Don't, now, don't come back. But look, but look. Go get the gun and come back. You got to do it right That's how the law go. But we're talking about the punishments for that. A man walk in and see you with the woman he's invested in. Just like a car. You put the rims on it. The tinted windows, the sounds, you've been investing in this car for years. And then somebody try to take this car. It's the same thing with your wife. You got kids with her. Y'all been building, y'all got a house together, all type of stuff. And then you see her in another man's arms. A man's mind will go in all type of directions. She might hate you. She might hate you. You say what? She probably hate you. That has happened. You can look that stuff up. It's husbands that have walked in and seen stuff and went crazy. Went to the other realm. Just went crazy. Why? Because they see their wife with another man. Adultery. You know? For jealousy is the rage of a man. Mm -hmm. Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He's not trying to hear nothing. He, don't, he ain't sparing nothing or nobody. Read. He will not regard any ransom. He don't want no money. That's ransom. You can't pay him. Read. Neither will he rest content, though thou givest many gifts. You can try to give him whatever you got. He don't want it. He out for blood. Read. So that's something that can happen as a result of adultery. Now, so my brother. Well, they do that for girlfriend and boyfriend. Yeah, uh, yeah, they do it for girlfriend and boyfriend. So imagine marriage. 
Yeah. So rock six and seven. Go ahead. Look, what if y'all dating, right? Then y'all get married. Can y'all still be like Say, feel like, you know, like, okay, y'all, David. Forgive forgive Yeah, you can correct that. That's you correcting. But is you going to do that? That's the question. You ain't, you ain't got to answer right now. That's between you and God. Make an honest question. Because you hearing, you hearing what you're supposed to do right now. Yeah. So whatever you do after this is on you. Read that. Sirach 6 and 7. The book of Sirach, chapter 6 and verse 7. If thou wouldest get a friend... Prove him first, uh -huh. and be not hasty to credit him. So with you proving a woman or his vice versa, you supposed to take your time and get to know this person thoroughly before marrying them. Take your time. It shouldn't be no rush. You ain't on no time clock or nothing. Take your time, get to know this person, and this somebody you considering. Before you end up in a situation and you find out this person into some stuff, they crazy, Doing drugs, they got people after them. All type of stuff will come out after them, after the fact. So take your time and get to know them. But this is the thing, Proverbs, not Proverbs, Deuteronomy 23 and 7. This is what you're doing when you don't marry the woman. Because my brother just said, make an honest woman out of her. That's what you do when you marry the woman that you with. You make an honest woman out of her. Read that. That's 23 and 17. Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 17 There shall be no whore Of the daughters of Israel You hear that bro? Read that again There shall be no whore Of the daughters of Israel You hear that? When you continue to sleep with the woman Y'all keep doing whatever y'all doing You treat her like a whore So if you truly care about her You want to make an honest woman out of her You're going to marry her You're going to build with her You're going to make her your wife you're not going to keep her in that state. Because you know something else that'll happen? God forbid. If you y'all live together, no. just say y'all live together, right? And you die. Do you think she can go to the courts and get anything? No. Say y'all got kids. Can she get any type of funds that you had? No. No, because she's no, not yeah. your wife. No, yeah. Well, you gotta be married for all that, bro. If you got all that stuff, right? If you got one, some people don't set that some up. When you get married, you supposed to have all that stuff. All that stuff that brother said right here, you supposed to have all that stuff when you married. But if y'all just boyfriend and girlfriend, if you die, bro, you not setting her up for protection. If you got kids, you die. She not getting nothing of yours unless you got some little stash in the house. We talking about like real financial. Protection. Okay, the funeral paid for. The bills is covered for six, seven months before she got to get a job. Maybe she ain't have to work when you was alive. This is stuff that you do when you get married. But if she just a girlfriend, bro, you leave her out to dry. God forbid you got kids. She not getting nothing. All those benefits you hear about, wills, trust fund, all that, that is for a wife. That's why you need to marry her. If you won't go that far with her, all that stuff you got to figure out on your own. We just showing you what God requires of you. Because again, we the Israelites, but we got to do what God says. So I hope that y'all got edified. Y'all learned something today. Y'all want us to come back. Um, reach out. Reach out. We'll come back. Uh, if y'all didn't get a flyer, get a flyer from us. All right, our school is from the Vision and Costner on the west side. We got classes every Saturday at 10 o'clock. Come learn the word. Come learn what you're supposed to do according to God. All right, y'all got any questions, any concerns, anything else before we uh, wrap up? Man, any questions? Time's up. Man, we can get deeper. Say what, sir? Got more questions. What is nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. 